And welcome to the Business Spotlight. I'm Pat Dewar. Today I have a great show that we're going to be talking about something that will, well, it'll affect every one of us. And the reason is, is that how many of us look forward to retirement and we think, oh yeah, I'll be ready for that. Well, probably less than any of us would like to admit. Because the reality is, is that most of us are not savers. But my guest today works with clients just like you and I. In fact, she does work with me as a, I want to say wealth coach, but I have to say so much more. She really is giving us options for the future. Cassandra, thank you so much for being on the show again. Glad to be here. Now, I know we've had you on the show before, Stanford grad, undergraduate, graduate degree. Mm -hmm. um, you work with people to help them create a, um, a financial epiphany, and that is the name of your company is Epiphany Financial, though, yes. right? Yes, yes. So when we talk about, and we've talked many times about the attitudes towards wealth, there really is a disposition, isn't there? Yes. To create the kind of financial, you call them options, that mm -hmm. people really want in the future. Can you talk about that a little bit? Well, the, there is an expression that I say all the time because it is the number one truth, which is that money is not math. Money is human behavior. So as I work with people and have over the years across the nation and across all, really kind of across all economic lines, I'm, I find that it is about, and it's not a think and grow rich kind of concept, that, that's too simple. Right. But there is a psychological disposition that then, once it's coupled with right behaviors, and again, you have to know what those are, mm -hmm. and that's part of the process. So it's both mindset and it's behavioral action, and both sort of married together lead to far greater outcomes than people had in mind for themselves. Is that something that's genetic or is it learned? Uh, I would have to say it's learned. I'd have to say it's learned. You know, I'll, and I'll, I'll give an example because I give this analogy all the time to people. It's about, and again, no offense to folks that are struggling with their weight, but across I the, resemble that <laughs> remark, so it's okay. Um, and it's just, these are just factoids. These are not judgments, these are facts. The facts are that anywhere from 60 to 70% of the US population is obese. Oh yeah. And, and people don't even need to know the statistic. You can just kind of look around your neighborhood, look in your family, and you can see the reality. Look at right. the elementary schools, okay? Yeah. It's, a, it's a tragic reality. And, and I'm not gonna get into the history of it all and, and what came about. When you think about what it really takes to stay relatively healthy and thin, relatively, you know, svelte, it's, it's outtake or output and intake. So it's right. what you consume and what you expend, energy in, energy out. The rules aren't that much different. So this whole idea that I have a thyroid problem or that I'm genetically predisposed to being heavy, no, you're not. Because when you look, again, if you look at the history facts about the weight of the United States population, it really didn't get out of control until about the 60s or 70s. And again, we can start talking about what happened with um, food production, et cetera. I'm not going to get into that right now. But you know, that the funny thing is, is money, that's about when we started losing control in our money. Yes. <laughs> it <is about> this. <laughs> yes, it is. There becomes a gluttonous kind of behavior. Um, gluttony is for, you know, one of the seven deadly sins, for what it's worth. But gluttony is not just about your food. It's about a behavior that says, I want more, 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 and I can't get enough. There is not enough to satiate something inside of me that I'm looking for. Right. Um, so again, it becomes an issue. I use that analogy because genetics, no. Some of us, sure, will carry a few extra pounds. My family disposition, we tend to stay thin and people wonder how can we eat so much and we stay thin because look at what we're eating and look at our energy level. And there's actually more that goes into it besides what you see me sitting down and eating, right? right? But some of that uh, I would think would be, it would be your parents may have eaten correctly in some of those areas. Well, if that is that just as much of a thing in money? Yes. You know, is it